Hey guys, Josh here from MobileTechVideos.com today with an all new segment that I am calling Launched. And it is about launchers that you should definitely give a first or second look. Okay, so today's launcher that we're going to be reviewing is Launcher Pro. Now, I have purchased Launcher Pro Plus, which is the actual pay-for version. You can get the regular version for your phone for free in the market and just search for Launcher Pro. Um, you can actually get Launcher Pro Plus, which is the unlocked version, uh, for a little bit more, and it's highly, highly worth it. And I'm going to show you some widgets and resizing capabilities that totally uh, show you why. Uh, to begin with, it is a standard uh, launcher for Android operating systems and it has a vertical based app drawer. There's no horizontal based app drawer, but the vertical based app drawer is among the smoothest that I've seen in terms of scrolling. And uh, that's something that I really like a lot. This is on a 1 GHz Captivate, which is a Galaxy S device using the Hummingbird processor. Uh, there's no overclocking done to this particular phone and this is running Gingerbread Mosaic two for the ROM, uh, but just to show you that it de definitely can compete with non-dual core phones, and there's a ton of options to adjust this to possibly even run on slower phones, such as the old uh, 5 to 600 megahertz Qualcomm processors from uh, previous generations. Um, one of my favorite things is the ability to have multiple uh, icon docks, and what I mean by that is you see my standard one here with messaging, email, browser, Facebook, and the application drawer, where I can switch swiftly move over and have an entire new row or another row or back to the original. So it's really nice to, on one page, if I need to get to PayPal, boom, PayPal, and done. Now it's real simple to add these. If I wanted to add a new one or set up a new row, I would simply click the plus key and I get a list of default options that I may want or I can choose applications and from there I can pick whatever application I may want. It takes me a long time to build this list because this phone has tons and tons and tons of applications. But uh, once it builds the list and it's the icons, it's actually very smooth and uh, you can pick whatever you want. So say I wanted layer to be that. And then from here I can choose a custom icon, which is really cool. You can choose your own picture if you want. Or you can use the default icon or even a Launcher Pro icon for very commonly used shortcuts, such as, uh, let's see some of the options. Uh, phone, contacts, messaging, browser, email, Gmail, market, talk, music, Google Voice, and so on and so forth. Uh, so there we would have layer now in our new icon doc. So what I like to do is have my daily use uh, here, something related to my website or business here, so PayPal, XDA developers, and eBay. And then sometimes I even like to uh, use that last one for navigation. So I'll have GPS test navigation, Google Maps, and uh, maybe some other things like uh, layer which are somewhat navigation based depending on where you're at in the world. So very cool stuff you can do there. Now as far as adding uh, stuff to the screen, it's just as simple as any other page here. You simply hold down widget shortcuts, you get a ton of options. You also get the Launcher Pro widgets if you purchase the plus option and man you really have to see these here in a second. They are very very cool and definitely something to check out. Um, Let's take a look at our preferences. Now to get to the preferences, we simply click the settings button and then preferences. From here we can see all of our Launcher Pro options. Uh, we've got general settings, home screen settings, dock settings, behavior, appearance, advanced, LP widget settings, and then we can also even back up our home screens and settings for when we're flashing different ROMs and firmwares, and we can simply restore that, and it'll put everything back onto your launcher that you had, with the exception of widgets, which obviously we all know that widgets are not migratable uh, when firmware is flashed. So, But it will restore everything else, such as the icon docks, uh, the transition effects, and anything that you've set up, uh, it, it can actually restore that type of stuff. So you click it back up and then you would restore uh, and it stores that on your internal SD card. You can also reset defaults as well. Um, this is an app brought to us by Federico Carnales. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If you, my friend, are watching this, you've done a great job. This is an amazing launcher. And it just happened to be the first one I decided to review for the launched series. So um, 
there's so many now, and I, I wanted to review some because there's a bunch of good ones, and no one should be forced to stick with the regular gingerbread launcher, which we will not be reviewing as there's really nothing to it. Um, so I really want you guys to be able to unlock the full ability of your phone. You know, make this thing cool. You can do a lot of nice things. There's another feature. At the home screen, if you press home, as with many launchers, you see all of the screens that you can get to, and you can select whichever one you want. Now, as I mentioned before, this is fully tweakable. So let's go ahead and take a look at our settings options. So general settings is the first one. We have hidden apps, which lets you remove or hide apps that you don't use from the app drawer. So you can have basically your custom guide as if you would on a, uh, say, Dish Network. You could have your custom channel guide, your custom app drawer. Uh, which is really cool. The keep in memory option is an experimental feature but it may cause instability but you can disable it if you're having problems and uh, it actually would provide for a smoother experience as long as it's not failing and it would allow you to uh, pretty much cache a lot of things that go on in the launcher. You can enable scrollable widgets. Um, that is something I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, ours are enabled by default so we don't have to check that. I haven't actually messed with the general settings to be honest. They really don't need to be touched in my opinion. Unless maybe you have a Motorola Droid, which is a Motorola Droid hack option, uh, which may improve the performance on those particular phones. Um, our second option is home screen settings. We can pick the number of home screens, the default screen. Uh, we can enable trackball scrolling if your phone has a trackball. Uh, virtual looping, that's kind of cool. Uh, if we check that, we can now go completely around and it will never run out. So like going to the left there, here is my last screen. I can still go to the left and it will bounce over to the right. So you would never stop. So it's nice if you're on that first screen, you want to go to seven without six flicks. You could just flick once and you're back on seven. Um, let's take a look at some of the other home screen settings. So in addition to that, we also have transition effects. This is one of the coolest things in this launcher. Now you've seen this in other launchers as well, such as uh, the uh, ADW launcher. And you can change the transition effects. Now this is amazing. Currently we have none set. However, we have tons and tons of effects. I'll show you one of my coolest ones, I think, which would be Cube. When I select Cube and I go home, watch the effect that it plays when I try to rotate to the next screen. It literally looks like a Rubik's Cube rotating over. It's very cool. It does require some processing. I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you have a highly graphic intensive processor such as the Galaxy S processor and the Hummingbird. So personally, I would say one gigahertz or higher for this type of mod but it's very cool. So there's Cube. Let me show you a couple other ones that I happen to like for the transitions. Um, the Flip 2 is pretty cool. Uh, if we use that one, you see how it goes completely side like that. So I mean that's, that's really cool as well. I think that's a really awesome. So it really gives a cool unique feature and to be honest it can run very well even on an underclock, I mean a, a standard clocked 1 gigahertz processor such as all the Galaxy S phones that I preach to you on a daily basis. So that's a, that's another transition. Uh, I believe that covered it for home screen effects. Um, a few more things we can do to the home screen grid. Number of columns can change uh, for each home screen. We can change the number of rows. We can also auto fit items uh, to resize the widgets to fit uh, more uniformly, which is pretty cool. One thing that is huge on this is it supports landscape viewing, which means I can turn my phone and the entire experience will also turn and the transitions are even still in play here. So that's really big compared to all the gingerbread launcher uh, ROMs that don't have landscape support. I happen to love landscape support and I use it on a daily basis and I hate being in an app with landscape and going back to my launcher and having to rotate the phone. So. Um, Let's go back and take a look at a few of the other ones, uh, which would be dock settings. There's a lot of things you can do here. The number of docks you can change from one, two, or three. Obviously, we had the max with three. Uh, we won't restart, but when you make a change, you restart the launcher. Um, you can enable loop scrolling. That way, they're in an endless loop and you never run out. I keep hitting double home. It's really annoying me. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but you can continuously scroll through these. I like that the best. I don't like hitting the end and having to go two back. I'd rather just go one more and reach the front. Um, let's take a, some more look at the dock settings. We can also enable missed call count, unread SMS count, and unread Gmail count, which is really nice. Um, that, that way if you had uh, your messaging set up here, 
You could actually see one, two, three, and so on and so forth for the number of missed calls or missed text messages you may have. I believe you do have to use the Launcher Pro uh, icon. Uh, so as we mentioned, you would have to do this and change the icon to a Launcher Pro icon to see that type of information, but very cool to be available nonetheless. Behavior settings, we can enable auto rotation, which obviously I have. Home key action can do a number of different things. We show open and close screen previews, but for example, if I wanted to open and close notifications with the home screen, from the home screen, if I hit home again, it would actually open and close uh, notifications. It didn't do it like I thought it would, but it normally should um, do that. So let me, let me take another look at that. That was under uh, behavior settings. Home key action. Let's see. Open and close notifications. Maybe I'm not reading that correctly, or maybe it's a bug between Mosaic 2 and Gingerbread and this uh, not supporting it. But normally, this option would be relevant to what the home button does when you're on the home screen. So, something cool to keep in mind. It should work in most other experiences. I don't use the option personally, so it doesn't bother me at all. Um, and the home key to default screen takes you to the default screen when you're not on it otherwise performs the action selected above. I actually like that one the best personally because that means I can be on this screen, press home, and it should go back to the home screen. That is definitely a bug with Launcher Pro and uh, Mosaic, but um, that's why I keep thinking I'm double tapping it. It actually is a bug. It's not a big deal though. I haven't seen that actually until the Gingerbread ROM, so obviously maybe I need to update. I haven't even checked if I have the latest version of this, but um, Let's move on to appearance-based settings. You can do a lot of things in here. We can even have different dock backgrounds. So if I wanted, um, right now I have none. Say I wanted glass. Let's take a look at that before we go. Obviously the background matches the actual screen background here. Whereas if we chose glass, let's take a look at what it looks like now. Now we have this little uh, piece at the bottom that kind of illuminates behind it. There's a lot of cool things you can do with that. And uh, it's one of the most customizable uh, launchers I think I've ever seen. We can show the screen indicator, hide the notification bar, hide icon labels, which is kind of cool if you don't like to see the labels and you'd rather just see a row of icons. However, I get confused if I have enough apps, I forget what the icon actually stands for. So I like to keep my labels turned on. Um, you can disable wallpaper scrolling. That's a performance effect. So now when we scroll, the wallpaper stays still. Whereas if we had it turned off, it would actually be rotating with the screen. Uh, sometimes I do that depending on what wallpaper I have. Uh, if you have something, see it and see how the uh, wallpaper is actually rotating with now. Um, you can definitely beef up the performance on this. So if you use a transition effect, you may want to turn off the wallpaper movements in the background because they're really not that important to the performance and appearance um, aesthetically. Uh, as they are. I think it's way more of a benefit to have performance there versus having that wallpaper moving in the background. Um, let's take a look at some of the other appearance settings. Highlight style, which is choose the style for the highlights when pressing selected icon. I believe you can choose classic glow and outline. Uh, highlight color focus, you can do a lot of things. Custom colors for what the icons look like when you press them. Advanced settings will show memory usage settings, and you can do a ton of things in here, such as caching things, um, which definitely enhances the performance of the launcher if you set that type of stuff up. Uh, keep in mind that you want to have lots of available memory for something like that, um, but if you do, you can check that out. So some of the newer phones that have a gig of onboard RAM, you can definitely play with those options. Five icon rows in the home screen. This would actually give us five instead of four, so we'll restart our launcher. And now we will see, we um, should see more uh, icons available in here. I believe it takes it from four to five. Or actually, sorry about that. That's five deep here. You can see the extra space here. So now instead of four, we have five. So that's pretty cool if you'd like to save space. I'm going to go ahead and skip into some of the other stuff here. High quality, high quality scrolling, elastic scrolling, which is the bounce back effect. Uh, minimum scrolling speed, you can even change how fast the screens change. The 3D app, door, app drawer is cool, I will turn it on for you. Now, as you've seen in ROMs in the past, the app drawer has this uh, bottom effect here of a cube that's scrolling over. Remember, I have tons and tons and tons of apps. I'm also running out of battery on my camera, but you can see them coming up from the bottom there. Um, it says it's in beta, but it actually works very well. Uh, let's take a look at some of our widgets that you'll get with the Pro version. 
Uh, some of the widgets are really, really cool here. Here is a text messaging widget and it's fully scrollable. All these widgets are absolutely amazing. Fully scrollable widgets and you can simply scroll through. You can press this little button to take you directly to the messaging app and you can reply and it's obviously one of the best widget apps that I have personally on this particular phone. Um, let me show you something with app resizing or widget resizing. Hold the widget, it turns orange. This is only for pro users and you can expand this and make it larger. It's very cool. Speaking of which, here's the Facebook app. All full scrollable. You can see absolutely everything. You tap, it takes you into the Facebook app or Facebook page. You can update your status, say what's on your mind. Very simple, very easy, all from a screen. Definitely beats the actual application by far, in my opinion. Um, the next one that I wanted to show you guys was the calendar. Very simple to scroll through, select your day, see all the events on that particular day and it's very simple to look at things like that. So definitely a cool widget right there as well. So I believe I've covered about everything I wanted to cover on this. We're slightly over the 15 minute limit. You can see why there's no way in heck I could possibly put all the launchers I wanted to review into one video. I'd be talking for two hours. Uh, but hopefully you guys like this segment. Please give us a thumbs up on YouTube here if you like this segment. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, bookmark our site, mobiletechvideos.com. And uh, we are your number one source for D-Bricks, LCD fixes, and all phone-related repairs, upgrades, and installs. We can practically fix anything. Just give us an email or a shout here on YouTube and let us know what you're looking to get done, and we can take care of that for you. So this is Launcher Pro. Be sure to check it out in the market. Be sure to download it. Check us out as well. Be sure to subscribe to us here on YouTube, mobiletechvideos.com. I'm Josh, your host, and I'll see you guys on the very next video.